And it looks like it started. Hi. So it is the 13th of June, um, 2018. And um, I have with us tonight Emily Wil Wilkerson. Wilkinson. Uh, Wilkinson. I, I apologize. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, who, uh, um, maybe you could tell, we've known each other a little while. And um, she is teaching this summer in a um, ELLS uh, Academy that um, I'm helping to coordinate that's using Youth Voices and LRNG. And you started, um, hi. <laughs> why, don't we, why don't you introduce yourself in case anyone wants to know who you are? <laughs> um, I'm Emily Wilkinson, as Paul just mentioned. Um, I'm from California where I taught um, L's for about nine years. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, see, I, I'm, I'm liking this already. I get to know more about you. Tell me about that. Um, so I've taught a number of classes. The majority of my work has been in middle school. Um, hmm. So I've done kind of the structured or sheltered classes as well as um, ESL or ELD, as we call it out there. Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you have that expertise. I didn't understand that earlier. Um, you were part of which writing project out there? I was originally part of the Central California uh, writing project, which is out of UC Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. And then um, I did some work with Bay Area writing project, so Bob. Was that, was that the digital storytelling? I did do digital storytelling with them, yes. Tell me about that. What did you make? I just um, want to know what you made. <laughs> um, I made a class of kids very happy. I can say <laughs> that. Um, we made a number of animation projects as well as films and websites. Um, yeah, we did an alphabet project um, around Oakland where they kind of brought in artifacts from around the city. Um, and we just wow. practice going through making web pages with different menus. Cool. And Harry Break is trying to join us here. In this, uh, hey. This we hear you. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have a camera anymore because I spilled a glass of water on my computer. And <laughs> this is the first day that I've actually been using my computer, but it's now saying that my camera can't work anymore. So I think it might be an effect of that, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There are worse ways to be underwater. So to this speak. is true. I've I've done the four days of with a fan underneath the computer, and I think I'm lucky it's even working. So you know we're halfway there. <laughs> so Harry, um, you missed Emily's introduction, but introduce yourself if you will. Yeah, um, I'm just. Uh, I used to work at the American School Foundation in Mexico City. Before that, I was an English teacher in the high school in Delaware. After leaving Mexico City, I moved back to Delaware. So now after getting my degree in uh, library science, I moved into the library. So I'm just doing a lot of experimentation with things like, um, you know, where we've been using 3D printers and trying to make makerspace and a lot of media bringing that into the library now. So that's basically, you know, what I'm all doing. That, all that's very exciting, but the, you also do um, live readings, which I love. I want I want everybody to do them. So oh, can like you? Uh, like the open mic to me. Yeah. So explain how you do that. Um, so in Mexico City, we were, you know, we were trying to think. It started there. We were trying to think of ways to get um, attention to the magazine the kids were starting. So we would just start these open mic nights where we'd open up to teachers and students as collaborations, and then some students would come in and do readings, and then we began to pair up teachers and students together to play pieces together. And so we recorded every single one so that we could start our own YouTube channel. So we'd have those as an archive. But they don't have to. They don't have to read their own piece, right? Is nope, they can read anything. Yeah. Anything's game. Yeah, anything. Sometimes it was people getting ready for the fall show at the school, depending on the production they were doing. They did like Les Miserables and stuff, and they would read short segments of that to kind of give everybody a preview. So that was kind of cool. It worked out good. Mm. And um, then, right. yeah, we brought it to here. Yeah. So, and this summer you are teaching a class? Yeah, um, it's called Upward Bound. So it's a program funded by grants uh, mm -hmm. for maybe students that wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to go to college. And this kind of gives them like a platform. And so they have a summer academy. 
And so on Mondays, it's called um, Classic Upward Bound, which is math and science kind of a track. On Tuesdays, it's just not science and math. So on Mondays, I was asked to teach a cultural studies class. So that will be just talking about Mexico and the stereotypes, you know, about Mexico and what the reality is versus the stereotypes. So that's what I've paired up with a guy that does virtual reality. So last night we sat down. And so for that class, we're going to start off with like a place in Mexico City. It's virtual reality for about maybe 15 minutes. And then is he in Mexico City? No, no, he's here. He's here. I, I have a, a friend who I teach with mm -hmm. who goes to Mexico City every summer. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, we'll have to exchange. Emails. Yeah, we will. So I thought yeah. I thought the virtual reality would be cool because there is some cities there like Xochimilco and uh, things that they might not know about. And that'll be a good segue into like some social issues. So we're going to pick one social issue a week on Mondays and we'll do start off with the virtual reality. And then I'll lead into, you know, like how we can um, set up a platform for debating, even if we don't agree, that mm -hmm. is like likes partisan. It's not, you know, uh, feuding and calling each other names and it'll be neat to send a temperament about how you can debate without agreeing. And I think it'll be on like these issues of immigration and um, civil rights and we'll pick a different Eric, social issue. I'm just getting a little confused. Is this the same class as the social issues is happening? Uh, it is. Well, yeah, I guess I kind of segued into that. So it'll okay. lead to that on Tuesday and then Tuesday, yeah, yeah, it'll lead into a class on Tuesday called, just like you said, it'll be called current talk. And that's what we'll do. We'll mainly just focus on um, controversial issues and how to debate them like with a partisan kind of, you know, temperament instead of just like, you know, calling each other names and things like that. So and then another class on Tuesday will be your book. And I'm just it's my job to, uh, you know, collect all, everything they've done from the 2017 2018 year into one like little yearbook, including the summer. So it's just me teaching them how to do that. So those will be three classes that I'll be to, between Mondays and Tuesdays. Cool. That's a lot. Um, hi, Bethany. Um, hi, how are you? I'll catch up with you in just one second. Okay. Great. Um, Harry, um, this is like, uh, this is going to be like work night, but it's good to, we have this chance to catch up too. Yeah, no, I wanted to see kind of like the stuff. I went back and looked at all the uh, past episodes. So I'm trying to catch up. Did you catch up with the, the folks in Orlando who are uh, doing? Was that the two girls? No. no. Um, so uh, <laughs> the um, play, uh, bleh, what are the uh, play? The playlist or? No, no, sorry. Okay. Um, anyway, the, the Orlando LRNG crew. Um, that's how I know them. Okay. The, um, sorry, I can't. Playground City. Sorry. Playground okay. City. Um, they, they are right now in the middle of a summer program around VR. Um, oh. where they are teaching kids about VR and how it works. Okay. Um, and then um, because they're in Orlando, they have a lot of connections with um, industry that uses VR. So they're going to spend um, a week being interns at different um, locations. Okay. Um, there might be, but they've developed um, playlists for all of that. Um, yeah, I'd like to connect with that. Yeah, okay. So there are two things we need to connect with. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, Emily, thank you for your patience here. But, um, and uh, Emily is working with me this summer doing mm -hmm. um, playlists and um, uh, youth voices with elves. Um, and um, that starts in July. And Bethany, would you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Bethany Silva, and I'm working with a group with the NWP and the, and the National Park Service hmm. on a project called Write Out, and um, I'm on the playlist creator team, um, so I'm stopping by tonight to see what I can learn. That's cool. Now, have you started at all to build a playlist? What, um, sort of. Um, we have, first we got our make cycles in place because it's, we're riffing off of the CL MOOC, and um, we have quite a bunch of brainstorms uh, going on right. about the badge that we want to create, but we haven't um, we haven't created the language around it yet. Um, we've also looked through a bunch of different badges and playlists to see how other people have constructed theirs, 
to think about how we might construct ours. Where will this? Where will the youth be who do these? Will it be youth or will it be adults? This one will be adults. It's um, it's uh, the write out is focused on educators um, okay. who may or may not be National Writing Project fellows. And where will they be? They'll be in parks or. Um, no, they can be anywhere, and our hope is that we'll be that um, people who are part of the writing project and people who are part of the park service and haven't connected yet will have the chance to connect with each other. Can you give me give us an example of a make that you have in mind? Um, yep, we're we're starting with a focus on mapping and. Um, we're looking at ways to map your place very broadly. Um, and so the first um, prompt will be, the first uh, email that goes out to everyone will be a bunch of different prompts about ideas of mapping that you might do. And then people will share out the maps that they make. And then we have, um, we'll have uh, an online video chat and a Twitter chat um, where people can connect around the work that they've been doing as well. And then the next week we'll cycle into um, riffing off of each other's uh, off of each other's uh, mapping that that we did. Cool. Yeah. Bethany, I keep uh, I don't know you much at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm looking at your background. Introduce your where where, where are you located? Where where do you do? Oh, I'm in beautiful New Hampshire. Um, <laughs> Um, and although yes. I was with the Philadelphia Writing Project while mm -hmm. I was in graduate school, and I worked with Project Write at the at Independence National Historical Park. Mm -hmm. Cool. Ooh, I um, see a link being popped up right there. Yeah, I don't know what he's up to. Okay, Harry, do you want to just say what that is? Yeah, that's just I a couple years ago I went to the Jane Goodall Institute and I worked with her about uh, mapping out communities. And wait, wait, you worked with Jane Goodall? Well, yeah, it's it's nice. kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, they they wanted to they were interested in when you were in Mexico. You know, like that was a place that wasn't really on quote the map. You know, what I mean, as far as the roots and shoots program, but um, she talks about like how uh, before you just go in and do something with a community. If you have the kids map out the community, they that's how she ended up working with the local communities with chimpanzees because they were like, "Why are you cutting down our trees when we rely on our trees?" Right. So you get the people that are in your area to know the environment more, and uh, it was a cool activity that we did with like kindergarten through third grade, and we had them actually map their communities in Mexico, and they have lived there. Some you know have been born there, and they didn't know anything about the communities. So it was interesting to see what they actually discovered about their own communities when you said. Where are all the people around you going? And how did they get back and forth to work? And what public places do you have? And like, you think they would know that because they lived there. They didn't really pay attention to that. And that mapping tool was really cool. And that's what, when I heard that, I thought, well, that's a cool, I mean, it just might be a technique, but it worked really well with our younger kids. But from like kindergarten to third, it was amazing. So it was cool. But it was just like, maybe if it's helpful, that'd be cool, so. Absolutely, it sounds like a great resource for yeah. us to check out and, uh and dig into. Yeah, they'll give you all kinds of free resources too if they know what you're doing as far as a program with uh, youth and stuff and communities and neighborhoods and stuff. They'll provide a lot of resources for free. It's great. So, oh, thank you. Yeah, sure. Anybody, um, if you're not familiar with what we do here, um, this is what we do. We have a plan and then everyone comes and undermines the plan so feel <laughs> feel free feel free to interrupt at any point and think about it um having said that i want to propose that that i jump in and show you a little bit about um what uh chris sloan and i worked on because uh, around a um and then and then you maybe you can ask questions about lrng and how do you make playlists and so forth does that make sense yeah that sounds great Okay, let's try that. Um, I'm, I'm looking to share my screen now. Um, finding the right tab so you don't have to look at my email. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, there we go, and we are sharing. Because yes. last last week you and Chris were working on Shakespeare and the uh, the playlist, right? Uh, that was more than last. Oh, that was okay. a while ago. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's all present, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. So um, this is what we were working on. 
right? You see the ISO poems here? Okay. So, yeah, it's uh, not nearly, uh, what page am I on? Okay. I see where I am. Okay. Let me just extend this a little bit. And so, Bethany, you you have a login on um, an LRNG. You. Yes, I do. Okay. So. Yes. So here's this is a playlist, right? Um, and it, nothing's published yet or anything. So, just to say, I will briefly say this, right? Uh, maybe I can put a preview. Oh, yeah, it's a little easier to see that one. So let me, I, I, I won't read the whole thing, but let's start that way. Um, like the cityscape was made in the style of ISO, Van Gogh's Starry, Starry Night, right? And there's a link to that. Um, I tried to make that a GIF, and it doesn't seem to be working yet. Um, just to say. Okay, we invite you to... Make a couple of poems in the style of poems linked to each of the XPs on this playlist. Choose two of them as metric poems. Is this, I'm looking at the wrong one. It's okay. This is the one I'm making with Beth, with um, Emily. Mm -hmm. It's okay though. Just to know, there, I'll, I'll introduce both of these and we'll see what happens. Choose two of them as, as mentor poems for writing your own poetry. Read aloud and record your poems that you write and post the text and audio discussions on new voices. Um, read and write comments using the commenting guides for three poems on new voices. We're still working on this, but the idea is that, and what was interesting is that the six teachers in our summer program, Emily, Emily is one of them, um, came up with a poem that they wanted to offer for this playlist, right? So um, I think this is mine. No, it's, it doesn't matter. It's taking some time. Sorry about that confusion. Is that clear now, though? That, so Emily, we could look at yours. Do you want to do that? Which one is yours? Uh, poetry Between Borders. The one okay. with the timestamp on it. OK. Why is it taking so long? Uh, trying to shut some tabs, see if that will speed some up. It is taking forever. All right, let's try it from here. We're looking at digital XPs. And which one is it again? Uh, the first one. Okay, good. Here it goes. So is this ready to publish, do you think? Or what, what are you thinking about it at this point? I don't feel confident that it's ready to publish. Um, okay. I haven't visited it since last week okay so I if, if i wasn't clear yet the idea is that there will be six or seven poems listed on the left side and the youth will choose two and so let's say a youth goes in and they read this one aloud right and it goes to me it is me no there it goes oh that didn't go to your poem i uh, know Okay. So what we'll to fix that? Yeah. So they read, they read aloud the poem. Um, they annotate the poem, highlighting the words in Spanish. They write one like it, and they post it on your voices. The poetry ideas are, do you want to read those? Sure. Um, what are two worlds that you live in between school and home, English and Spanish, Lagos and New York City? What does it mean to live between these worlds? How are they separate? How does language differ between these worlds? Use Andalusia's um, 
Anne Zeldua's poem Frame to start a poem about what it means to live in two places. Um, and so it's just a frame for the first sentence to live in the borderlands means. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, do we want to fix that link now or want to? Definitely, I could do that. <laughs> is uh, it is it up on, on now comment? It should be, but perhaps it's not. I haven't actually checked the link. Okay. Why don't you work on that? If All right. You find the link, and, and I'll go on to this. I'm sorry about um, the misdirection there. So okay. that's one. That's one playlist I'm working on with um, six other teachers. Right. So that's an interesting process in itself. I think. <laughs> um, when when is your uh, like your date that you want to have that up and running to have people submit things? July, well, yeah, let me try to answer that a little more. Yeah. So here's, and, and I have another thing to show around this. Those are the um, kind of things that I would like to do with the kids, you know, to have them like participate with this. It's, that's a pretty awesome, I think. I mean, yeah. Um, so this one, Forgiveness Poems. Uh, Louise Balso has submitted, and it's she published it. We can look at it, I think. Worth noting, um, we're working with elves, right? So there is some experience and some question about how difficult it is to see the assignment here and then go to another tab to do the work, mm -hmm. right? So Louise has summarized over here. We want to invite you. Um, make a copy of this document and free write about your experience, read aloud the two model poems, brainstorm and draft your own forgiveness poem, and then share your poem, right, um, with the recording. And then what she has started doing is putting a more structured mm -hmm. for L's um, page up, which they, I think it should say at the top, and it doesn't anymore, which they, Go, oh, it does right there. They, yeah. they make a copy of the document and um, right, go file, make a copy. So this becomes their document. Oh, right? cool. Um, Louise knows this. Absolutely. She hears this. show. Sure. It won't be the first time. I, I, I want to make sure these don't become worksheets, you know, so that they still allow lots of room for writing and but as long as they make yep. it easier and work in, in Google, then they're, it's going to be more interactive with technology, yeah? Yeah. Um, the, base, the question always is, could I go ahead and write a poem without, without doing the vocabulary book, hmm. right? Without doing the, but, you know, I want them to spend some time with the model poems. Um, So what kind there, of there, there's a lot of teacherly stuff we do, which I think is wonderful and necessary for a lot for some kids and for other kids, you know, they could just go write the poem. So leaving room for both, I think, is what we're learning to do. Go ahead, Bethany. Well, I um I was thinking this is work that's being done with by places that are taking part in youth voices, right? That's correct. And which and as I understand youth voices, um it's usually taking place within, but like even though it's asynchronous across what project you might decide to do, um, people are in the same room yes. while they're doing it. Not all the kids, obviously, but there's usually an adult who you could turn to and say, hey, I have this idea, or a friend you could turn to and say, what do you think about if I try this? Um, so you have, so you kind of have that, uh, mentorship structure built in that's that's exactly right yes yeah. i can see why that would be like okay how what is the balance between mm -hmm. help and um worksheet so yeah the ones you're developing will there be 
Well, they're for adults, first of all. So it right. makes it a little different. Right. Um, we actually hadn't thought about frameworks for any of them um, as we were thinking about our um, our XPs. We were or and our playlists. We were the directions that we were giving were very because they've already interacted within the make. Um, yeah. They it's more about uh, curating and reflecting on what they've made and how they've interacted with other people who've, who've taken part in the make as well. Um, so we hadn't thought too much about, about like, how do you um, create structures? One of the things that we have thought about is with adults, um, uh, there can often be a resistance to, actually not with, not, not usually with, NWP folks, but I have seen resistance to, all right, instead of, um, you know, doing something that's written, I'm going to do a stop motion animation yeah. um, as my map, right? So like trying, so we were trying to think of ways to build in um, exploring different modalities with the work that you do. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, we we're, and we we're trying to think of how to embed that into an XP. Yeah, you you know they do they do have choices still. I think that we're we'll, we'll always about you know submitting different things. Yeah, I've I've noticed that actually. There's that there are quite a few where it's like to demonstrate that you've done this. Either submit a video of yourself reading it, or um, submit a video of um, submit a video of whatever. Um, or submit an image. So I've definitely seen that built into other ones, uh, into other people's playlists that I thought was really interesting. So worth thinking about on that, um, I think, is with youth, and then you, you'll, you'll do the translation with the adults, right? Mm -hmm. is, um, is to start thinking about what they submit for an XP is really an invitation to youth and in your case adults to submit something for a portfolio right? mm -hmm. so what do you want them to put in the portfolio and that can absolutely still have choice in it but um right but we don't want you don't want worksheets in a portfolio right right so that's so that frame i think is really an interesting one um mm -hmm. to keep in mind um, do you have your, uh, do a lot of people have yeah. the youth voices uh, students um, uh, curate their work into portfolios including uh, including their badges? So, not so much, but we're moving in that direction. and And the reason I, I say it that way though, is making a badge is making a portfolio, right? The, yeah, or submitting work for your badge is making your portfolio. Mm -hmm. but Beginning next week, LRNG will have the ability to have portfolios too. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're looking forward to that. That's really neat. Um, let me um, let me do what I said I was going to do earlier, <laughs> and because I think because this is not about youth voices necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and it's related to your mapping notion, and it's about place, I think. So. There's no playlist created yet, but these are the, am I sharing my screen? You yeah. are. Oh, okay. So these are what Chris and I worked on last week, and I want to finish this week. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that and never get done, but we're going to try. So what we're having you do is list important places, um, take some photos in those places, um, read some place poems, um, write one themselves, put it next to the photo, and then comment on other people's, yeah. right? So that's the general thrust. We were also dealing with mapping, but we kind of felt like um, it was getting too messy, <laughs> if I could say it like that. Um, in some way, um, so what we're going to do instead is invite youth to, and I don't have this written yet, but I can and maybe actually do some editing as, as I talk. But we want to invite you to post. OK. 
So this is what we had so far. We invite you to make a list of important places in your community. Choose one. Tell stories you associate with that place. Share feelings you have about it. Describe what you see here. Smell, taste, touch there. Um, where they put that writing was was an open question. What? Any thoughts or questions about? Bethany, maybe describe what you're doing with the mapping, because okay. it, it's related, I think. But I think so. That's and we're also working with Chris, so um, so oh, I wonder okay. if part of that was what sparked her to. Um, but, but it's, it's, it's it's Chris Sloan I'm talking about. That. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Chris. Okay. Um, That's so. <laughs> so uh, we let me actually pull up a video. Uh, that is an example, um, and I will be sharing my screen in just a second. Okay. Um, and it's only a minute long, so. Let's All right. Wait, so let me get. Let me stop sharing. Mine. Make sure yours is sharing. You're sharing it. Yep. Um, I haven't shared it yet because okay. I have been using Zoom a lot recently, and. <laughs> So I am getting better at going cool. through here. Okay, I think that's my screen now. And so here is an example that I made to give people an idea of what we might be doing. Uh, are we supposed to hear anything? Oh, is it not? Yeah, we can't hear it. It's um, okay, it's can just you, music. Can you, okay. Oh, so. <laughs> Yeah. So if it so if you don't hear the music, that's all right. You'll uh, the actual map that I make is the the part. So what are we doing here? We're this is me of... making a list, mm -hmm. and then I made a heart map. I was uh, playing with Georgia Hurd's idea of um, heart maps for poetry, mm -hmm. and so then I filled in all my places and drew little pictures. Realized I couldn't draw bikes very well. And, That's beautiful uh, what you're doing. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> cool. mm. So I don't. I, I acted like I knew. I don't know. This is George Hurd. Georgia Hurd. Um, Georgia Hurd. Yeah. So okay. she actually. I can pull up Georgia Hurd heart maps. All right, and let's see. We're just going to go to Amazon because it has pictures of what she does. So she has um, she has her students uh, as like an introduction to writing. They map the things that are important to them, mm -hmm. and then you like put your heart map on top of your writer's notebook, and um, you draw upon it as you're creating new writing. Um, let me stop sharing my screen now, too, because yeah, that's, cool. that's uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so, but that's just one idea. Um, other people have gone into national park sites and collected photos, and um, and uh, then like taken a map of the national park site and placed the photos onto where they would actually be on the map. Um, and so, all sorts are, of. Are you getting quieter, or am I? Oh, it might be me. I have to say. Yeah. Let me see. I lost, I lost you completely. Ooh. Ooh, Is it just I me? just there you I, go. That's better. Okay. Um uh and then uh so so uh I don't know how far back to go. Um so other people have gone into national park sites and um taken photos while they were there and like put those put the photos actual onto an actual map. Other people have done things like Google Maps. Um, mm -hmm. So in some cases, it's really focused on like one particular place and other in other cases, people are mapping um, very metaphorically. And so it's however they want to approach the mapping because when people share, share what they've done and look for themes across the maps, they, we think something interesting will happen. We're pretty sure it will because it has before. <laughs> how how are they going to share with each other? We have um, we're still deciding because a lot of people don't because we don't want people to not do it because they don't have Google accounts. Um, but 
in the past, they've uh, people have shared into a common Google folder that anyone taking part in write out or not write out, but CL MOOC can access, or we can share it into a Dropbox folder or another online way of sharing it. And then you can, um, with the idea that other people can grab what you made and then um, and then remix it as well. Actually, um, Kevin Hodgson. Uh, remixed one of mine. Let me see if I can pull that up. Because he posted that. Um, so, so, but because those are all part of the make cycle, um, mm -hmm. they, I'm trying to talk while I type, which is never a good choice for me. Um, <laughs> um, oops, I didn't get it though. Twitter decided to autocorrect what I had put in because it thought my search wasn't what I was actually talking about. Um, and so let me see if I can pull up his remix. Oh, there it is. Great. All right, now I will share my screen again. And share, and we'll pull it up. So then he took mine and he took mine and made his own um, GIF of it, um, mm -hmm. which is really neat too. Um, yeah. So when you're thinking about XPs, uh, you make a map. Mm -hmm. Your heart was a map? My heart was a map, yep. It was okay. a map of places I love. Do you turn that in? Or do you I, submit it on the XP? Yep. Uh, uh, Yes, that was one of the things that we had. Um, I can actually pull up our notes about it too, so that I'm drawing from reality and not just um, and not just what I remember. Like, okay. I, just more wanted, detailed I just wanted to encourage. Yeah. I mean, maybe you're thinking this way already, but I'd encourage you to think of like what gets submitted when. Right. So you uh, submit. If you submit it, then. Where does it get shared? I mean, you're sharing and submitting, which is confusing, right? Oh, you're right. That is going to be confusing for people. Um, we were thinking that people would put together their badges at the end of the write out. So, but you think that they won't bother, that that might not work. Hmm. I don't know. It's like um, you've already. In your descriptions so far, you've already described moving on to the next step where you're remixing somebody else's. Right. So then it becomes confusing about what am I submitting? Am I submitting my remix of somebody else's or am I submitting my original? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's not confusing. But So let me see if I can also pull up our... So in the make cycle, mm -hmm. maybe you've done this already, but... I think you need to segment it, right? And decide this this is what gets turned in. This is what you know. then we remix and then that gets turned in, then we do this and that gets turned in. Mm hmm Which I think I think you might the, right. a little too much, but worth thinking about. Let me um uh, I did find what I was trying to experiment with. Um let me throw back yeah. something that I have thought of. And that is that um, Chris and I were experimenting with, um, instead of putting things on a map, what if youth put things on um, a Google bus, right? Uh, a, a Google communities, right? But like you said, not everyone has access to that. I was just in a school where Google communities is blocked. Um, you know, so I'm like, uh, so that's not going to work. So what I did is I created this page. You, so youth can. So here's the three things we want them to do. We want them to have images. We want them to have a poem in the end, and we want them to have a a geolocation. Whether it's on a common map or not, we've kind of given up on. Um, so and then using Juicer here and Youth Voices, we're able to use this tag, NWP place bombs, right? To 
So if you put it on your voices, it shows up on this page if you use that tag. Um, if you use um, Instagram, which I think a lot of youth do, a, a recent study said 72% of the youth in the world, in the United States, use Instagram. So if you use Instagram and you use that hashtag, it shows up on this page. Um, and then you can just go to it, to um, the comment, right? And then let me try to get back. Right, and then it, oh, I just want to pause you for a second. Did you yeah. say Juicer is what pulls that is what pulls that into Youth Voices? Because that's great. Yes, Juicer, and, and if you pay for it, you can have more than two. If you don't pay for it, <laughs> you only have two strings. Right? Okay. So we're using I and. Let me just save you some time. <laughs> yeah. So to, to, to use Juicer with a hashtag, Facebook doesn't work. Flickr doesn't work okay. because, because it goes to individual accounts in both of those cases. Oh, okay. Um, but um, Twitter does work, but, I, but Twitter didn't give me uh, enough text space. So I didn't want to use it. Um, so Google Communities gives, gives us enough text space and lots of images. And you can geolocate, right? The where where the what the text you're talking about. That was sort of our our criteria. And then um, Instagram also has all three of those things: lots of text space, lots of image space, and lots of um, um, geo. And you can geolocate where it is specifically. Oh, and one of the problems with Twitter also is you can't locate in a park, for example. You can only locate cities and towns. Um, worth noting. <laughs> uh, so experimenting with all that, but at least you have these three options, and they can go to this page and find each other's, and then comment on each other's. Is all that making some sense with what we're trying to do? I wanted to go back to... That's a really useful tool to get everything. So people can use their preferred space and then have it go on to go into one, uh, you know, whatever, like, so if we have a Word WordPress blog, we could use Juicer to make a page that pulls in that hashtag. You can. Oh, that's yes. great. Yeah. Thank you. I think, yeah. Yeah, experiment with it. See what, see what you can and can't do. There are limits, as I just tried to very quickly indicate. <laughs> but um, Emily, did you fix that link yet? I believe so. <laughs> you found it in in now comment. I did. Okay, um, we'll there. get back to that. Let me um, let me just review this again. I, I just want to show off one of the things, Sean. Um, just because I've been obsessed with. So taking photographs is pretty obvious, but as soon as you, t you talk to Chris Sloan, like he's he loves photography, <laughs> and we have a consultant here in New York. Anyway, so interesting to think about. Um, one one approach would be take ten pictures and then choose five. Like, how do you how do you encourage youth to? It would be true for adults to to kind of like don't just go take photographs. Really think about it. Yeah. Um, when when you're in that space. Um. So we're thinking about that XP for that. Um. Maybe for your banner. Um, yeah, kind of split it up um, with different photos that have been taken from different angles, etc. That's a nice idea. Yeah. Oh, so they, so instead of saying do this, they see the example. They see right. examples. Um, yeah. yeah, kind of a grid with different photos. Or a GIF works too. Right? Yeah. They could it could flip through some. Yeah, yeah. That's a task though. <laughs> That's cool. It's a good idea. Um, we we started to take photographs from kids so far, like for the magazine, since we moved it from Mexico to here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got like 150 in two weeks of just people that have been taking photographs. And they know that there's, if we don't use the magazine, they know we're going to put it on the blog. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if you give opportunities for... Uh, the students to have their work be published in publications places. 
like as a result of the XP that they're doing? Yeah, I mean, so in the first XP, oh wait, it's interesting. Where do they choose? Yeah, in the first XP, they are posting just their thoughts about the place. Mm -hmm. And then they're going back to that same, which could be in any of those spaces I mentioned. Could be on Instagram, could be on, but these don't have to go in order. Could be in Google communities or could be on Youth Voices, right? You have those three choices. And then you can go back and add the images or add your writing later. But wait, I'm, I'm, I'm misspeaking. Pretty sure we're only asking for a Google document here. But yes, uh, good, good thought. We will have them publish. Because <laughs> if that, that makes a little bit more sense, uh, if you're worried about if they're going to go through the necessary steps instead of just saying, well, why can't I just submit a poem or why can't I just submit a photograph but by going through those steps and kind of like really thinking about it and really like putting some thought into it if they know the end result is those types of writing those types of photography maybe those ceramics those things like that are the reason for those steps are so they can be actually considered to be put out there you know on an international level whether it's a publication or a blog or something then yeah. you're putting a little bit more merit into like, well, I'm not just doing this because it's something they want me to do for their site. <laughs> I mean, it's also helping me hone in where I'm going with this, you know, so. No, that's that's helpful. And and Bethany, I love your idea. Of, I mean, we ours was sort of boring here, list of places. And then, so the idea of the, of the mapping your place is an interesting thought. We have to look at that more. Um, so. One of the things we wanted to do was to have them read place poems. Um, and I should make clear that, um, for, so we're proposing this as a national playlist for um, LRNG youth, hopefully this summer. But if it doesn't get done this summer, we'll get it as soon as we can. Right? Um, and if you go to LRNG, you can kind of, I don't know if you can see this in the upper left. Am I still sharing my screen? Sometimes I forget to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I'm, I'm not I'm working with that thing. <laughs> there we go. Um, so what we wanted youth to be able to do was to, so let's say Badgerland is in Wisconsin. So let's say you're in Wisconsin, you're in Columbus, you're in Detroit, you're in Philadelphia, you're in San Jose, you're in Springfield, Ohio, Chicago, DC, Kansas City, uh, Orlando, and West Sacramento, right? Um, to, what we've done is create a collection for them to find a place poem in their city. Um, and please log in or sign up. I am Can students also do this if they don't have one of the cities located there? Absolutely. So what, what we'll do is we'll say, here are some examples. Um, and, and we chose the examples from those LRNG cities on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they can, um, yeah. Then we're going to say, you know, they can either add to our blog or they can, um, right, or they can just find one themselves. Cool. Um, and it's got so much going on, but oh, it's coming. So here's here's one from Sacramento. There, it's a poem about the Sacramento River, right? Um, what what? There's a a love poem that the poet laureate from Orlando wrote. A love poem about Orlando, right? There's a, and there's a, a poem about um, the, the, the uh, Vietnam vet, sorry, Vietnam War Memorial um, in Washington, DC. And then two poems by Gwendolyn Brooks about Chicago. Right? Um, <laughs> found a poem about a swimming hole in Springfield, Ohio. Um, lovely poem about seals um, in San Diego. 
um, Vine and 18th Street, some music and some stuff about jazz by a great poet in um, Kansas City. Love Letter to Philadelphia by um, a Philadelphia Poet Laureate also. And then famous poet from Detroit, Philip Levine. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. Um, a Native American um, poem about a place in Wisconsin called Red Banks. So what's nice, I think, about these is that we can then link later to say, write a, write a letter to your city, right? Or write a, write a poem like this one that looks at one of Glennon Brooks' poems. Uh, she's driving through a neighborhood she's not comfortable in, right? So that could be one of the spaces, right? So the idea is that, the, that they would have a, ment they would pick one mentor poem. And just to make this totally obvious, um, and make some comments on it, right? Um, and then write a poem like it in some way, or like one of those poems. We're being, we'll be real light about what we mean by like it, right? <laughs> um, so where am I? So I've been sort of obsessed by finding all those and totally fascinated by going to each of those cities and finding the poet laureates and it's, it's a wonderful experience to see that you can go to any city in the United States and find amazing things around poetry, right? <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, what you started to suggest, Terry, is absolutely true. Um, if they're, those are just examples. Kids should find their own yeah. um, based on those examples. Um, and then they write the place poem and they comment on somebody else's. So this that's our playlist. That's the okay. idea. It's, I mean, it's working right now, right? What? I mean, you're like, if kids wanted to go there, say next week, it's ready to roll. Uh, no. No. Okay. Yeah. That's all I was wondering. Well, I mean, like your time frame is going to be. Oh, like by a, next week? Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Because that would be cool. I mean, if talking with you, but I mean, it'd be cool to um, pipe in. I only have these kids for five weeks. But as part of the lesson, when I meet with them, it'd be kind of cool to have them go into LRNG and to say, okay, this is what we're going to do, tying it into what we talked about today. Go for it. And it would get them pipelined into here because a lot of the things you have in there, just looking at the poems that you had, that's, you know, there's issues that that's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, Emily, do you want to come back and show us your poem? <laughs> As we finish off here, sorry. Let me let me try to get to it. Um, and as I'm doing that, Bethany, did did going through that raise any questions or issues for you? Um, Not questions, uh, just answers. That was really helpful. Um, the some of it has to do with things that the other that the other groups are kind of focusing on. Mm -hmm. One of the differences that I'm seeing is that for youth voices the playlist works um very much in the same way that the make cycle functions and so there's going to be some duplication and we have to figure out how to make it feel like how to make the badge and the playlist feel like it's related yeah. and worthwhile rather than repetitive um or just repeating the same process yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. We can think on that. You don't have to have the answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. <laughs> but knowing that we need to think about that but, is. But really the question, I, I guess the question is do you need both? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We also were only going well, to do one badge. So. Um, yeah, so one badge and, and how many make process how many make cycles do you have? There's two make cycles. Um and we were going to only and we were going to do one badge. So um so the focus of the badge could have to do with your reflection on on 
the work that you did and how that informed your practice as opposed to, um, you know, just sharing the work that you created. <coughs> Sorry, I'll go mute again because I would- No, don't go mute. <laughs> I, well, I was about to cough. <laughs> no, I want, oh, you can cough too, don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, yeah, okay. It's okay. It'll be interesting to see what you guys come up with. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It'll be fascinating to see what you guys come up with. Yeah. Um, But absolutely, you're right. That's how we have used um, playlists as as Mike Cycles. Um, And and the better playlists are, (laughs) are, are better Make Cycles, right? So the more we learn how to do that the, from you guys, the better too. Um, I just wonder though, in, in the reflective piece, like you would still need to pull out some artifacts, right? Mm-hmm. To, to upload. Yep. So I don't know, it just does seem to me that collecting those along the way somehow yep. would be important. Yeah. But yeah, you guys, those are good problems. Bethany, I'm, or Bethany, sorry. Emily, I'm going to your link now. I'm still. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's the name of your problem again? To live in the borderlands. Why would it go directly to mine? First? Maybe because my. Um, oh, maybe you didn't make it public. Okay. Uh, that's, that's probably it. So I haven't made a document public on here. Do I do yeah. properties, access dates? Uh, so, oh. Let me find an example. Okay. You can, you go to edit. I go to edit. Okay. And then. There's the Sacramento one. Uh, so. Okay. You made it public? I did. Okay. So the link will work. That's worth knowing. I didn't know why it didn't work. (laughs) All right. Um, Harry, you have any further thoughts? Oh, Harry, did you get a chance to look at the civic civic learning one? The what? Uh, Civically civically engaged. No, I mean, like, I'm kind of learning as you're going along. I mean, this whole time that we've always been doing teachers, uh, you know, teaching teachers, I've like always been focused on youth voices and very few times have gone, if at all, into RL. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. RL learning or, without the bounce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I just went in there tonight and I was like, geez, I've never really went in there, but that could be like, I don't know. Uh, these are questions that will extend beyond this, so I have to do probably email with you. But I'm just curious because I think that I could use a lot of those all throughout the year with tapping my students that work on the magazine, like into getting things from there. I mean, like it would be cool to work with you and say, hey, you know what? There's a lot of pieces in there that have to do with some of the kids we work with from Mexico and some of the kids that we work with here in the United States that are from Mexico. But it would be cool to use if you wanted like some of the things that appear on LRNG to like some of the things that appear in the magazine when they publish the magazine. I don't know. I mean, I think I could get more kids involved with LRNG if they say there's like an overlap with cool. I can get my opinion on youth voices and do some things in LRNG, but also as a result, those things are going to appear in the magazine when it gets printed and go to Mexico and go to yeah. all over the place. And I think it would be cool to get, the kids funneled. I mean, I'd like to do some of that this summer when I'm meeting with these kids as far as like most of the kids, well, all the kids, I don't think they'll know anything about youth voices or LRNG. So it might be a really good opportunity to present that as a tool well, though. For them to I, right. I did, I did send you. So because, because of your, your issue is social interaction, right? I right. think about conversation about social issues. Um, we spent lots and lots of time developing a um, uh, in civically engaged playlist. Cool. Yeah. That that, that we hope is. Oh pretty- yeah, I got that one. Actually, yeah, I, I know what you're talking. I'm sorry, I did go into that. Yeah, it's great. Worth looking at. Yeah. So, no, I was looking at given, it already. Given your yeah. focus. Yeah. yeah, it looks good. All right. So when you're ready to hook people up on um, LRNG and so forth. Yep. I, I asked need, for. I need uh, names and email addresses, and I'll help you do it. 
Yep, I got I got that out, and I think they're gathering them right now. So right. hopefully before we start on Monday. <laughs> but if not, when I meet with you them, you start on Monday. Monday. Wow. Yeah, but I'll, I'll have them for sure. So I mean, if not before, I'll have them when I see them. So. All right. Yeah. Uh, Bethany, thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me. It's been so helpful, and I'm and thank you, Harry, for the um, for the link uh, to the Jane Goodall mapping. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I, it's cool because like one I sent you is a little bit more technical where it shows them how to put things on a Google map and then they create their own map using Google map. But I like the resource that you showed because I didn't understand what that was. So I, I I'm not familiar with that process and I pulled it up on YouTube and it's pretty cool how it's really artistic. And yet there's a lot of things that come out that are literary. So I like that mapping. I've never heard of it before. I like it. Yay. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, Emily, we'll talk soon. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you so Have much. Yep. Bye.